Hey, how's it going everyone? So, I'm going to call this one of the more important videos that you're ever going to watch. In terms of not getting taken for a ride, or at least hopefully not getting taken for a ride. So you want to buy a car, truck, whatever, used vehicle. And you're not that vehicle savvy, let's say. No, there's nothing wrong with that. It's like I'm not carpentry savvy at the house or plumbing savvy or electrical savvy at the house. I'm not. I, I'll, I'll be first to admit it. I'm car savvy. Some people are not. And that's, that's absolutely fine. That's why I always tell people, if you can, bring a car to me before you buy it. You know, at least let me look at it. Now, let's say there's a car you want to buy, but you can't get it to um, your mechanic or whatever, have somebody look at it. I strongly suggest you do. Let's just say you can't for whatever reason. So you find a car, you know the vehicle you want, you're looking around on Marketplace or Craigslist or whatever, you see one for sale in a parking lot, whatever, and you're interested in it, and it kind of fits your budget or whatever. How do you know you're going to get something decent? Well, it's, it's always a gamble, but let me show you a few things that you could check just to keep yourself on the better, uh, to have better winning odds, so to speak. So let's use my truck, for example, here. So let's say I wanted to buy this truck. Okay, what's the first thing you want to do? All right, so let's say you see an ad for the, say I see an ad for this truck. Okay, I want to go buy this truck, or at least I want to go see it. So the guy says, uh, or the owner says, hey, let's meet at um, the local shopping center over here. You know, a lot of people don't want you to go to their house, and I understand that, I get that. So you guys meet at a shopping center. Never go alone. Never go alone. Always have somebody with you. And if you are not car savvy and you don't have a friend that's car savvy that can go with you, just bring a friend. It, it always helps to have somebody with you. Tell your friend not to be a chatty Kathy either, so to speak. Trust me. So you get to the parking lot, person's already there. You go and you start looking at the vehicle. Take a walk around the vehicle. So here we go. So we're going to take a walk around the vehicle. Okay, the headlights are a bit etched. Okay, there's a little damage to the bumper. Ah, it looks like somebody probably caught a trailer hitch at some point. It's pro pro probably what happened. The paint's a bit faded. Okay, it's got a dent in the hood there. It's actually got a hole in the hood there. Look at that. Okay. Windshield's not chipped. You can see the paint on the roof. It's flaking. You know, the clear coat's coming off. Pay attention to that. Pay attention to the paint job quality. Look, there's another spot where there's going to be a hole eventually. Take a look. What do the rims look like? Okay, if the person just drove up, put your hand over the wheel. Okay, there's some heat there. I just drove up here. There's some heat there. Go to the other side. There's some heat there. It's about even. It's about even. Front is way more important than rear. Um, that'll tell you, if you have one side that's hotter than the other side, that tells you something. Brakes are either dragging on one side or not working on the other. So it's something to keep in mind. It's actually starting to rain. Hang on a second, because I brought my laptop outside. So hang on one second. All right, so luckily it only drizzled for a little bit, but I got everything inside. So, okay, so now we're doing the walk around on the outside of the car. Let's keep going. Hold on one second, I'm getting a message. Like I said, I do everything on my phone. Also, I did notice, I did take a quick glance. I know some of you have started emailing me about uh, laptops and stuff like that. So that's going to be coming up soon. I'm going to start reading all of that. But yeah, I'm going to have to go to GoPros and whatnot so but that's coming up in the future soon i hope so anyway here back to the uh truck you're gonna do a general overall look look at the door handles you know are they loose are they falling off look at trim see that you got trim coming off if the person that you're buying the vehicle from sees you inspecting stuff like this like actually looking and paying attention they're gonna know you're savvy or at least you kind of know what you're looking at Look at body lines too. 
see the gaps in the doors? That'll tell you a lot. That'll tell you, hey, was this car wrecked? Look at the paint. Yeah, the clear coat's coming off. It's not a big deal. Well, at least not for me, but it might be depending on the price of the truck. Look at the fuel filler area. See what it looks like. Take the gas cap off. See what it looks like. Just take a look. See, make sure that that'll look, that'll look somewhat like that. There might be a flapper door in there. Make sure somebody didn't butcher it up or anything like that. It's also a good spot too. Look at the hardware that's holding everything together. Because that'll tell you too, is it ever wrecked? Look at the condition of the rims. Now, yes, this is an older truck with 240,000 miles on it now. So things are expected. Are the taillights cracked or broken? No. What's the bumper condition? What's it look like? All right, everything looks pretty good. Yep. Right. Truck's even more valuable now. Open a tailgate. You got a trunk? Open a trunk. Take a look. What does it look like? Just take a look at everything in general. It doesn't hurt to look. You're buying it, or you want to buy it. Make sure everything looks and appears to be good. Look at that. Even more valuable. Taillights are good. Yeah, some paint issues, but overall, not bad. Okay, it's got some dents in the door. All right, it's got no broken mirrors. All the glass is intact. The molding's got a couple of issues. All right, not a big deal. You see how it's sticking up there? But if you look, look at the body lines. Body lines are fine. Body lines don't show anything. All right. What's the condition of the windshield? Grab a wiper blade and actually pull a wiper blade up. Look at the wiper themselves. These are relatively new wipers. See how that looks? See that? That's actually what cleans your windshield there. What does that look like? Because that'll also tell you the person taking care of their car. Because they got all torn up wiper blades. They're probably not really taking care of it. I'll be willing to bet. All right, let's come back around. Let's open up the driver's door. Now we're going to open up the doors. Not all cars will have the label inside the door. Some cars will have the label on the B pillar there, sometimes on the A pillar. On some cars, I don't remember which ones, they'll actually have it in the back. But open up the door. Look at the door panel. How does the door panel fit? You know, is everything secure? Does it look good? Look inside the jam here. This is called a door check. That's normal for it to have rust like that because see how it rolls? And it holds the door in different positions. See that? It holds the door fully open and whatnot. That's going to have rust on it. There's really nothing you could do about it. Some cars actually have a slider type thing that go from there, that are mounted here and come out and, and disappear basically inside the door. So when you open up the door, a lot of times on those, when they crack, you'll hear like a snap as the door opens. All right. So now just take a general look. Hmm, looks pretty good. Okay. What's the condition of the seats? Oh, looks like... Somebody with some talent actually replaced the seat bottom on this. What's the steering wheel look like? What does the dashboard look like? Take a look. What does the headliner look like? Everything looks good. Let's open up this back door. How does that look? Same thing. Look, there's a sticker there. Okay, so that tells me this door wasn't repainted. You know, overall, the door looks good. The panel looks good. The panel's not broken. Same thing with the door check there. Everything looks good in there. Uh, it's a little messy. The guy who drives this is a little bit of a slob. No big deal. But everything looks good. We're going to leave the door open for now, too. So now let's come to the other side again. Oh, yeah. What's the condition of the bed liner? Now, here's a big thing. With trucks. Look at the overall condition of the truck. A lot of times, especially in a northern truck, underneath the bed liner will, will be rotted. A lot of times. So it's something you got to pay attention to. Sometimes what you could do on a northern truck or a rust belt truck, when you get in here and you drop the tailgate, get up under here. Take a look. Oops, sorry about that. Let's see if I can turn my mirror on. My mirror, my light on. Hey, look in there. Is it rotted? You can lift this up as high as you can. And look in there. See that? See what I've done? Okay, everything looks good. No big deal. This stuff should pop back around. Okay, no big deal. I'm not worried about it. So everything looks good on this. This one's not rotted. Now we're going to come over here. We're going to open up this door. We're going to take a look. Everything looks good. There's a sticker there. Door plugs are there. Everything looks good. Okay. 
Door handle feels good. We checked our door handles on the outside. They all look good. Same thing on this side. Door panel looks good. All those bolts look good. A lot of times you can see witness marks if stuff has been tampered with. You can see paint marks or whatever. Everything looks good. Look down at the rocker panels. Everything looks good. All right. So now, with that being said, let's come around. Let's open up the hood. This is all stuff you want to do before starting this. So we're going to come over here. We're just going to close the back doors a little bit. And we are going to come over here. And like I said, look at the dashboard. Look at the knobs. Are they worn and everything else? A lot of cars, they'll wear out. They'll, they'll actually, especially GMs, they'll actually, when they have to push the buttons and stuff like that, they'll wear out. Look at my cruise control. It actually wore the on, off, and resume, or whatever, or set, rather. It actually wore that off. Let's come down here. Let's pop the hood. Oh, another thing. While you're here, even if it has a handbrake, push down on a parking brake. Feels good. I know that because I know it works. But that feels good. You want to do that. Make sure it retracts. See how nicely that snapped back? You want to verify that. Now we're going to go underneath the hood. Oh, wait a second. All right, we know the horn works. All right, so we're going to come here. We're going to open up the hood. Let's just take a general look and see what we got. Do we smell anything? Take, take a deep whiff. <sighs> nope, I don't smell anything. Everything looks good. Take a look. Just see. Just give a general inspection, even if you have no idea what you are looking at. Just give a general look. If you give a general look, even if you have no idea what you're looking at, the customer will think you do, or the customer. The owner of the vehicle will think you know what you're talking about or looking at. Also, when you're under hood, under the hood, a couple of good points here, good, good places to check. Check for your labels. AC label here, engine identification emission label there. Look for those, see if they're there. If they're missing, eh, something's happened. Look here at the hood nuts. They don't look like they've been disturbed. I know this engine's been replaced. It was replaced before I got the truck, but I don't think they pulled the hood off. I think they just pulled the support off and did everything from up here. But anyway, if you look, see how these bolts have witness marks on them? That's from the support being off of it. Check to see like coolant level, stuff like that. I mean, everything on this truck looks pretty good. Okay, Nothing that I see is detrimental. Everything looks pretty nice. You know what? You don't have a lift or anything. Bend down. And take a look underneath. You see any oil leaking? Not really. Everything looks pretty good. Take a look and see if you see... See how smooth the metal is here? If this thing had been wrecked, you might see crinkles. Like obvious crinkles that don't belong. Sometimes there'll be crinkles like this. That's actually a crumple zone area. It's designed to be like that. So this gives in in case of an accident. It's supposed to be like that. But you want to look for obvious things that are not supposed to be like that. Like you can see how this is kind of uneven. Same thing, it's supposed to be like that. All right, so what's the next step? Let's start it up. Now, you want to start it up with the hood open. Take a listen. Actually, you know what? Let's check the oil first. Hang on. I almost forgot to mention that. All right, so now the truck has been sitting in a level spot this whole time. So now, just grab your dipstick. Have some fast food napkins ready. Almost every car in the world has these. Wipe the stick off as it's coming out. And also, when you wipe the stick off, take a look at the oil that's on the rag. This is pretty good oil. I'm actually do for my oil change. I was going to do it at 1,500 miles. It's just been so darn busy. I haven't had a chance to get it on the lift. Stick it back in. Make sure it bottoms out. Pull it back out. I could need a quart of oil, actually. It's been a while. And no, actually, I'm still okay. But see that? The oil is not nasty black in color. If it is, I can actually see the ad. I can read the ad underneath the oil. I don't know if you can see that. But I can actually read ad underneath that. So the oil is good. I know that. Most cars nowadays do not have transmission dipsticks. Transmission dipsticks. Let me get this up there. 
have become a thing of the past. And a lot of cars don't have oil dipsticks anymore either. <clears throat> You're supposed to have this car running and in park, but I'm not going to bother with that because, like I said, so many cars nowadays do not have dipsticks, so we're not going to worry about it. What I am going to do is because this has a dipstick, I'm just going to pull it out, and I'm just going to look at the condition of the oil that's on there. Now, transmission fluid, when it has a transmission problem and the transmission is slipping, the fluid will have a real pungent, nasty stink to it. And it'll also be black in color. This is not. This looks good. It smells good. Yes, it's a little dirty. It's a little worn. But it looks good, so I am not worried about that. Okay, hold on. Also, with all of that, you can see the brake fluid through the reservoir there. It's pretty full. It's actually just a little bit below the full mark. Most cars nowadays do not come with power steering fluid. Most cars are electric. This one has power steering fluid. It's fine. I'm not worried about it. I have no leaks. I have no issues. If I could just get the cap back on. Okay. Now, never take a radiator cap off when the engine's hot. Never. You're going to disregard that. You put your hand on it and feel it. It's hot. But look at the fluid level. Like in this one, it's hard to see because of the sun. The fluid level, it's a little bit over full, but that's fine. I'm not too concerned about it. You don't have to bother looking at air filters or stuff like that. But now we're going to come over. We're going to start it. What does it sound like? You hear any abnormal noises? Let's see. No, sounds perfectly fine. No issues, no noises. Fans running because of the AC. The AC clicked on. Motor sounds smooth. I'm happy with that. All right, so now... Like I said, you want to be an educated consumer. Come on over. Auto down. It's working. There's Gigi. We're going to check all the windows. And now, what we're going to do is we're going to come over to each door. Okay, you close the door. Come to the inside. Okay, door works. It might not work from the inside if the child safety lock is on, just keep that in mind. So if the child safety lock is on, you may have to switch it off. But also, reach in, grab the window switch. Okay, it works. Let's come over to this side. One thing a lot of people do not check for, too, is the jack equipment. Find out where the jack equipment is supposed to be and see if it's there. Because, you know, you get a flat, that stinks, especially if you don't have jack equipment. Okay, all that's working. Come over here. Working. A lot of cars will not allow you to lock the door when the door is open. So here we go. Well, the other door is open. Oops, no, that's a window. I can hear it trying to do something, but it's only because the door is open. That door. All right, so all of that's good. Now, what else you want to check? Check your visors. Check your interior lights. Your interior lights, they're all working. The seat, does it recline? Does it, is it a power seat? See if the seat actually works. Hang on one second. Go over and open the glove box. Okay, glove box opens. Got a cup holder, see if the cup holder is broken. Make sure the door for the cup holder is not broken. That does happen quite often. What's the condition of the dashboard? Do you have a mirror with a compass and a thermostat in it, thermometer in it? Does it work? Okay, all stuff you wanna check. If you're interested in the stereo, obviously turn on the stereo. Make sure everything with the stereo works. Close the hood. Okay, everything's good there. Now we're gonna come over, we're just gonna sit in the driver's seat for a minute. All right. So now that we're here, I know this is supposed to have a button here and it does have it. What is that for? Tow haul mode. Basically it changes the shift parameters inside the transmission. So we know that that's working. Turn that off. Cruise control. Okay. That turns on and off. 
Now, I'm not really too interested in the radio. I know this thing actually has a radio issue. I've never listened to the radio in this thing. I did turn it on once, and that was about it. Oh, there. See, the volume doesn't work correctly. Oops. So, but I am absolutely not concerned about it. I never listen to the radio. All right, so check your heater. Make sure your heater's working. I'm sweating like a pig over here. It's so hot. Do all the speeds of the heater work? Yes, no, maybe so. Okay. Yes, they all work. Now, here's a crucial one. Switch from vent, or yeah, from the vent on a dashboard, switch it to defrost. Does it actually switch? Hmm. A little bit. It's not working quite right. I still have it coming out of the dashboard. What does that mean? Well, one of two things. Whatever controls the door, it's a door in, inside the heater box that sits inside the dashboard. There's a door in there that controls, does it come out through the top of the dash? Does it come out through the vent? Does it come out through the floor? Is that motor or vacuum actuator, depending on the model of vehicle, is it working? Is that part broken? Is the door broken? I know the doors are broken in this. So it never switches, it stays, like it'll go partially to defrost, but still have partial on the dash, and then it'll switch partially. I never get heat on the floor. So come winter, it's gonna be a little bit miserable because there's never any heat on the floor and it's, it kind of sucks. So that, towards the end of summer, fall, I'm gonna take the dash out of this and fix that. Okay, but regardless. What warning lights do you have on? Okay, well seatbelt's on because I don't have my seatbelt on, but look, I got a check engine light. All right, we're gonna have to look at that and see what's going on. Also, I kind of missed this. I was talking about the heater. <coughs> when it switches from DeVros to vent and everything else. Switch from AC to heat. Make sure it works. Make sure you have heat. This thing does have heat. It just never comes out through the floor. It comes out through the vent and the, and the top, but that's about it. it. Never comes out through the floor. So all of that's got to get fixed. You have rear defroster. Does rear defroster work? Okay. Um, you have tilt wheel. Does tilt wheel work? Let's see. I know it's got tilt wheel. Okay, tilt wheel works. I'm happy with that. Now, here's the important one. Let me grab my little scanner and let me show you something. So this is my little blue point code reader. Now, most code readers nowadays will show you what I'm about to show you. This is basically my little cheapy that I was always keeping in one of my cars for any time I wanted to read codes on something. So let's plug this in, find the connector. Most of the times, most connectors are over on the left side of the dashboard somewhere, somewhere underneath. And you know what, let me show you just so you know what they look like. Some of you might not know what they look like. That's a connector. It's the same on every single vehicle, no matter manufacturer, since 1996, I believe. Well, at least US cars, I think. I forgot what year they went to on all cars, but it's all cars in the United States at least. So I'm gonna let this thing power up and then I wanna show you something. So it's doing its little thing here. Dodge, is this your vehicle? Yes. Okay. PO420 stored, cat efficiency. All right, that's not what I'm concerned about. I know this thing has cat codes. It's got cat efficiency codes. I'm concerned about those green dots. What are the green dots? Those are monitors. Why is that important? Okay, let me show you real quick. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shut it down. I'm gonna turn the key back on, and I'm gonna erase the codes. So here we go. Erase, yes, one moment. Okay, it's auto loading again. <sighs> Start it back up. I need to have some AC in here. It's flipping humid. All right. Now, see how those are flashy in red, but it's got no codes and it's got no check engine light. You could pick up an inexpensive code reader that'll do this, and I'll put a link in the description for stuff. If you're going to look at a vehicle, it has no check engine light, you hook your little reader up and it shows 
that those monitors are not ready. You know what that means? That means they cleared the codes just before you got to see the car. Disconnecting the battery on many cars will clear those also. So it's something to keep in mind. Look to see if the clock shows like it was just reset or something like that. Because that's always a possibility too. A lot of cars too. Make sure the radio does turn on because like Hondas, many different cars. You'll have to have a code to make sure that the radio works. So now, what does that mean that the monitors aren't, reset, aren't set? Okay. This car has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight parameters, or what they call monitors. One is for cat efficiency. One is for misfire. One is for the EVAP system. There's a bunch of different things that it's all about. So what happens is, as you're driving down the road, the computer's looking at certain aspects of the vehicle's operation. And they say, okay, as it's going down the road, okay. At this point in time, the catalytic converter passed its test. It's good. It changed that light from red to green. Okay, going down the road, misfire monitor. It's gone so far, it's checked. Okay, all the misfires are gone. It turns that light from red to green. Okay, that monitor is set. Same thing with oxygen sensors. Same thing with, you know, the EVAP system, whatever. That doesn't mean down the road you may not have a problem because every time you restart the vehicle, it basically goes through a series of tests to start retesting. However, the monitors stay set as being good from the last time you drove the vehicle. Understand what I'm saying? So this way, they'll always stay green, but they're always checking for that issue. Follow? So if the car had a problem, it could take three days to run a monitor. It could take a week to run a monitor. Usually, usually, usually you could do it in 20 minutes. I've seen different cars do all sorts of weird st stuff. A car that is on dead full may never run the EVAP monitor. That was a trick that I learned. Yeah. You can, if you want it to, if, if you are an unscrupulous seller, that's what they do. They know, hey, this thing's got an EVAP leak. Let me make sure I got a full tank before I bring it over to that for, for that person to look at. Yep. Guess who got scammed on that years ago because I didn't think to check the monitors. This guy. It's a Subaru. It's a good deal on the Subaru, but that's what the person did. I didn't even think about it. A couple days later, you know, stupid me, I didn't check. A couple days later, check engine light comes on for an EVAP system leak. Well, dang it, you know what? It didn't run the monitor because it had a full tank. I have to wait till it got down to three quarters of a tank. So it was a problem that the person who was messing with it turned out the top of the tank where the sending unit went in. Um, I forgot exactly what happened. There was something, something actually had like a little pinhole in it and I had to fix it. It was, it was aggravating, let's put it that way. So that's something to really keep in mind. A cheap little handheld like this is under a hundred bucks. Um, it used to be under 50 bucks. You could probably still get one. I don't know. I haven't looked at one in a while. Um, but yeah, so now the next step is take it for a ride. Always drive the vehicle. Unless, of course, you know what you're getting into and it's the type of vehicle that doesn't run. It's a completely different scenario. We're not going to cover that. Um, all right, so let me do this. Let me get Gigi inside the house and then let's go for a ride. So I'm editing this video together and I forgot to mention I realized it. When the person you meet, if you meet them at their house, there's a car with plates on it. If you meet the car elsewhere, does this person have like a, a, a the wrong plate to the car on it? Is the car registered? Is the car insured? It's all stuff to look at because you might be running into a flipper. If you run into a flipper, you gotta be mindful. I mean, there are scrupulous flippers out there. I, I know a few flippers, but they do the right thing. But that's that's what they do. You know, they flip cars. You know, same thing as flipping houses, but they flip cars. But I, like I said, I know a few people, they're very honest. They will fix everything on the car. But yes, they are flippers. A lot of them, though, are not honest. So just something to keep in mind. Um, what's the other thing I want to say? Oh, yeah, just turn your lights on and just give a look. You know, have the engine running, turn your lights on. Just make sure all your lights are working. That's all. Uh, high beams, low beams, stuff like that. Because if you got, let's say you got one side lights are out, you know, if you have everything out on one side, something could be wrong there. Because who thinks to check the lights during the day? Right? Okay. Back to the video. Okay, so Gigi's actually in the house. Now, before we go on a road test, one other thing you want to check real quick. Check your tires. What's the condition of your tires? How much tread do you have left? Make sure you don't have cords coming through. 
you know, you don't have to go out there with tire gauge and everything else, measure depth. Just take a look. Do they look okay? You should be able to tell just by looking at it. Look in the middle here in between. Do you see cracks, like deep cavern cracks? That means they're dry rotted. Nah, the tires look okay. All right. Let's go for a road test. Now going on a road test, before you actually go on a road test, you should check all your seatbelts. Pull them out, clip them back into the uh, buckle. Do they work? You know, it's important stuff. So, verify your mileage too. I saw somebody get scammed not too long ago who bought a used Toyota Camry. And they're like, it's only got 69,000 miles on it. I'm looking. Eh, I don't know about that. Sure enough, go over there. It was on trip A. Hit trip. Hit trip. Because it had to go to B. Then back to odometer. And it showed that it had 189,000 miles on it. Person told them it had 60,000. Guy wasn't paying attention. Yeah, he thought he got a 69,000 mile Toyota Camry. And he did not. What are you going to do? It's an as-is sale. And the guy didn't lie because the, the guy put on the, the thing, the correct mileage. He just wasn't paying attention. So now you're going to go on a road test. I stuck in a reverse. Felt good. I stuck in a drive. Felt good. Now, it's a little bumpy leading out of my road here where I live. So listen for abnormal noises. That sounds good. Yeah, bumps, it sounds good. All right. Let's go up the road here. Don't be afraid to get on it either. Cars are designed to do that. Able to pick up on you know if something didn't sound right, it sounded perfect, it sounded absolutely fine. Look in your rearview mirror too when you do that. Do you see smoke? Seriously, do you see smoke? <clears throat> a lot of times, a car that's burning oil, when you get on it like that, you'll see some blue smoke behind you. Now, if you went to a car and it was the first start, the motor was cold, uh, you could see steam that's you know, condensation, steam type stuff coming out of the tailpipe. It's perfectly normal on almost every single car. Of course, it's electric. Um, so, but anyway, you're up on the road. I'm doing 60. What's it feel like? Do you have any shakes? Is the steering wheel straight? Everything feels okay. You know what? Let's hit the brakes. No vibrations. Stop pretty good. I mean, that was a, not a harsh stop, but it was a fairly quick stop. Accelerating again, everything feels good. Nothing feels out of whack. Oh, listen for wind noises. What is your ear telling you? Do I hear any abnormal whistles or whatever? You got a sunroof? Does the sunroof work? Make sure it opens all the way, make sure it tips up. Make sure the little flapper in the front's working. Of course, I don't have a sunroof, so I can't show you. It's all stuff to consider. Looking at the rear view mirror, I realize I forgot to close the tailgate, no big deal. Just turn around here. Make sure you pay attention to oncoming traffic if there is any. Like I said, don't be afraid to get on a car. The manufacturers, since switching to fuel injection back in the late 80s, when everything went to fuel injection, basically 86, 87. Since then, they built in rev limiters and stuff in the vehicles. And they do that on purpose. So this way, they can control breakage, basically. This engine might redline at 5,000 may shift at 5,000 and never rev any higher. Well, you know what? If it didn't have the rev limiter built into it, this thing could rev up to 7,200 RPM. You know what I mean? It may have that capability, but the manufacturers don't want you to drive like that. Because you know what? Under warranty, they don't want you to boil their stuff up. 
won't blow your stuff up because then they would have to pay for it. So they tune everything way back just to basically protect you from yourself. Uh, also the newer cars, what happens is with electric throttle body, what happens is if you notice like on an old car that has a cable driven throttle body, usually when the or even carbureted cars, when they shift to the next gear, you can almost get like a nice harsh shift. Now it's like, boom, and then it's in the next gear. You don't get like that harsh bang into gear. The reason for that is with the throttle body, what they do is they actually kick the butterfly back momentarily and drop the timing way back to drop the power level down as it shifts into the next gear. This protects parts. So don't be afraid to get on it. You're not gonna hurt nothing. You know, and if you do, that car, car, <laughs> that car had a problem already. So just be mindful of that. Sorry about my shaker bottle that I got on the floor that's making some noise. So last but not least, when you're going down the road, you got power mirrors. Check your power mirrors. Check each one, make sure they work. Make sure they fold too. Most mirrors that are folding type mirrors, make sure they fold. Because I've seen it too often where somebody has broken one and they'll actually, you know, JB welded glue it, crazy glue it, anything, uh, Gorilla Glue, to hold it in place. You may not notice it. So just look at it. Take a look at it and then fold it. Make sure it folds. Don't fold. There again, something to consider. So it's so a whole bunch of pointers. You know, hopefully that helped you out. Um, because nobody likes to get ripped off from buying a car. It's, uh, it's terrible. It happens way, way too often. I see it happen way too often. Like I'm telling you, that person with the Camry, that just happened last week. Just happened last week. A um, couple of weeks back, I showed you that other car that person wasn't paying attention, needed tires, it needed like $1,000 worth of work. It's all stuff to consider that you can put into the price of, hey, you know, this person wants $3,000 for the car. Well, you know what? I could see it's going to need tires. I could see it's going to need this. Hey, the wiper blades are torn, you know. And they see you looking at this stuff that already puts it in, in your head that you're a savvy buyer. If you go there all bright-eyed, like, oh, my, that's the car for me, don't ever do that. If you do that, they got you, and they know it. So it's just something to keep in mind. Uh, all right, well, I hope that helped some of you out. I hope you next time you go to buy a car, you think about it a little bit, you know, before you jump the gun. You know, I'm not, there's way more good people out there than there is bad people out there when it comes to selling cars. You know, it's just unfortunate that bad people are what give everybody else a bad name. So, all right, hopefully you got something out of that video. If you did, hit that like button. If you could, please subscribe. And like I said, down in the description, there's a link to Amazon stuff that I personally use. And I'm going to put a link to a similar type of scanner that you can get from there. I'm going to research it right now. And I'm going to put a link to one in there. It'll be the first one in there. Um, but just click on it. Take a look at it. Uh, even if you don't buy anything, clicks do help. Yes, I do get a little little something from them. Um, it, trust me, I still got to keep a full-time job. So uh, anyway, that's about it. So um, hope you enjoyed your weekend. Have a great day. Keep wrenching.